most challenging thing that we faced on this film is trying to outdo what we've done on previous films, come up with new ideas and, and something fresh and make it not feel like kind of a rehash of, of what you've seen before. Michael Bay told us that he was doing sit-ups at the hotel in a high-rise and looking out and looking at, at, the, at the environment outside the window. And he said, wow, if we had a tilted building, that'd be a cool sequence. We could slide down and see all these uh, high-rises around us. This is not a good idea. What? But the biggest problem on today's films, especially a film like this, working with Michael, is the camera's always moving. Your perspective angle is always shifting, so you have to have artists here that create dust and debris and steel and glass and aluminum and paper and all the different things that are falling and, and the fire and the smoke and everything. Created from the perfect camera view as it's moving. That takes a lot of experimentation and there are a lot of failures because you put something in, looks too small, looks too fast. Uh, it didn't arc the right way. In the world of visual effects, things have changed radically. When I started as a camera assistant, I had a really heavy camera on a tripod with straps and chains, and you locked it down, and you couldn't pan it, and you couldn't tilt it. Cut to today. We can do anything we want because we have these incredible artists with these great tools now that can track to any of it. Now, Michael, do whatever you want. Just get a great shot get the lighting you want and put in the sun flares and put all that stuff in that looks real because that's what audiences are used to seeing and that was always a problem with visual effects and that's what's fun about these movies is that I think we've carried everything forward in making them look exactly like what you do with a real camera with real lights real objects We're at a point now where one thing that we try to do is polish our act. We like to increase the magic. One of my favorite simulations, there's this one shot, the building's tilting and we're doing the helicopter move. It still wasn't complete until we had one little air conditioner that was falling down on the very top and that's what everybody looks at. <laughs> I know there, there are all these people that are about to die and they're sliding down the bit, but that air conditioner is really cool the way it bounces down there. <laughs> Something of yourself. He's pissed. You lied to us. There's a few factors that go into how we execute a transformation on the film. The character that's doing it, the kind of the emotional feel of the, of the scene, the attitude of the character at that particular moment. So like Optimus when he transforms after Sentinel has kind of done his damage at, at Nest, there's a more of a slow kind of somber way that he transforms. Whereas when Bumblebee ejects Sam on the freeway, it's a very explosive uh, transformation because you're in the midst of battle and uh, it's kind of desperate. They have to stay kind of in line with how the audience is feeling at that particular moment, what would make sense to them and, and what makes sense for the characters, how they would behave. And it's, it's an extension of their acting. You'll notice that the Autobots transform in a different way than the Decepticons, and that's intentional. In the same way that there are design cues in, in both the Autobots versus the Decepticons. The Decepticons are kind of jagged and dangerous if you, if you get close to them and touch them. Uh, and we wanted to kind of convey that same type of uh, difference in the way that they transform. Autobots have an elegance, whereas the Decepticons have an abrasive, kind of sharp way that they, they transform. Their movements are very aggressive as opposed to the Autobots.